either protect yourself or deal some damage. Greetings, viewers. Brad Pryder of Barstool Entertainment doing another Skyrim video. This one is about dual enchanting. In order to dual enchant items, you have to get your enchanting skill up to 100, and then you have to spend some perk points. And you might also want to get your alchemy up and spend some perk points so you can create a potion of fortify enchanting. And, well, yeah, it, it can go round and round and round and round and round, but I'm going to deal with that. And this is a video on dual enchanting. Before you enchant, you need stuff to enchant. And my character is a dual wielding fighter. I have encumbered him with dragon bones and ebony, etc., because. I'm going to forge two sets of dragon armor and some weapons here. And the first thing I'm going to get is the forge here. And I'm doing it at night because there is no one here to bother me. And so let's get forging at the blacksmith forge. And I've already got the the smithing skill up to 100 so I can forge dragon armor. Whether you do light armor or heavy armor, I prefer heavy armor. I'm going to make a dragon bowl. In fact, I'm going to make two of them. And once you get your smithing skill up to 100, again, whether you go light armor or heavy armor, you need to get it up to 100 in order to make dragon related. Um, armor and weapons. Even the light armor, which would be dragon scale, not dragon bone, is more is the most effective armor in a sense. Now, once you get the armor made, I'm making the plate armor, and again, I'm making two of everything. The reason I'm doing that is I don't know for sure if I have the correct um enchantments i need i'll go over that once i know i have them but i'm making the armor ahead of time and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to make the smithing skill legendary and use those perk points to increase the enchantment when i get it up to 100 now what i'm going to do is I have crafted some potions of smithing, but before I do that, I'm going to dump everything into this barrel right here. And this barrel is outside of War Maidens, and to be honest with you, it is the safest place to store things for a somewhat long duration. I don't want to say a really long duration, but if you need to dump stuff off and put it into this barrel, it's probably the best place for you to store things for several days. And again, these barrels are right outside of War Maiden. Oops, my character lost his armor. This is not good. Yeah, I was having a glitch, and that caused a bit of a problem. Gotta get that armor back here. And again, these barrels are the best place to store stuff. Now what I'm going to do is create a potion of fortify blacksmithing, but I can skip over that. You got to go and use your alchemy skills. Again, I did a, a um, video on alchemy and why it's an important uh, skill to have. But I'm going to skip over that and get to enchanting the armor. Now, before you dual enchant, you want to make sure your enchanting skill is up to 100. And then you want to spend perk points on enchanter. And 
that's what I'm doing is now I'm getting Enchanter. You want to get it up to five because now your new enchantments are 100% stronger. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to Legendary the Smithing skill. And like I said, once you Legendary it, it goes down to 15 and you get the perk points. I'm going to spend those perk points on enchantment because I can always bring the smithing skill up easily. And now I want to get enchanter up to five. And you go up to insightful enchanter, spend on that, go up to corpus enchanter. Yeah, bouncing around here, corpus enchanter. And then you go up to extra effect. That will give you dual enchanting. Now, again, I can re increase the smithing skill to 100, or once I've done the enchanting I want to do, I can make enchanting legendary. Next, you're going to want to increase your alchemy skill or spend some perk points on your alchemy skill. Now, the perk points you want to spend on your alchemy skill, you only need to spend three. And you can keep them permanently there. It doesn't matter. You want to put one on Alchemist, which is fine. Physician, you want to spend a perk point on. And then you want to spend a perk point on Benefactor. This will make your, dual en your enchanting, fortify enchanting, and fortify smithing potions that much more powerful and potent. Also, eventually I will do something on Restoration Loop. I'm making Fortify Enchanting Potions. And now I'm going to, these are not that powerful, but if you have a special, how shall I say, um, things like a, you use the Fortify Enchanting, and you make a um, helmet that allows you to fortify alchemy and fortify smithing. You can make dual wielding things like that. I'm not going to bother. I'm going to get back to enchanting the armor that I know. Like right here, I'm going to make a fortify enchanting. And again, I'm going to make a few potions. And the apparel I was using, much more powerful potion. And I'm going to use that. Let's see here. Fortify enchanting, 11% stronger. And let's see. I'm going to put this necklace. And I'm going to put fortify alchemy and fortify smithing on it. And spend the black soul gem. That will give my character stronger alchemy skills and smithing skills. But I digress. I'm going to move on to something else here and actually enchant the armor and items that will give you a very potent character. Okay, as I've shown previously, you want to get. The perk points spent on the alchemy, those three perk points are essential. You want to get the enchanting all the way up to dual enchanting, but you want it as powerful as possible, so you got to spend those perk points. As said, you can uh, make things legendary and get your perk points back once you've done your enchanting. And I know it seems like a lot of work. But now we're going to get into actual armor. The dragon ar bone armor my character is wearing right now, not as potent or strong as far as enchantments. Now I'm going to go to Alchemy Lab, and I'm going to flip to these apparel that I'd created that allow my character 26% more powerful. And yes, it's cumulative. So now. Everything 26 or 26% more powerful. And I'm going to make 
a bunch of Fortify Enchanting Potions. Probably 10 of them. And for 30 seconds, everything is going to be 16% stronger. Doesn't seem like a lot, but it can add up, like sneaking, etc. And once I've made these potions, what will happen is I'm going to move over to the enchanting. And I'm going to make the items I'm going to enchant. I'm messing around here. But this is the spare set of dragon plate that I have created. And as you can see, I have some chant enchantments on the helmet that I don't like, and I'm going to have to redo that. And then on the armor, I have enchantments that I don't like that I'm going to redo as well. The boots and the gauntlets, I'm going to make duplicates of those. Uh, I'm going to improve the necklace and the ring. Now, when I, I go over to this arcane enchanter, I'm going to drink a potion that will fortify enchanting. And I'm going to do that per item. And I want to save first. I want to put in a quick save that that way I can start the enchanting process. And if I screw up, well, I'm going to put in a hard save here. And if I screw up, well, then I can just reload. So after the hard save, I'm going to take the potion of fortifying enchanting, and then I'm going to enchant the first item, which will be the ring. And I will put on it, I'm going to put on it fortify lock picking, not destruction, fortify, not heal rate, lock picking, and pickpocket. They will be 43% easier. And I make that. That helps right away. You can pick locks easier and you can pick pockets easier. Now, the next item I'm going to make will be the necklace. I drink a potion again, and the necklace is going to have on it the resistance to disease and resistance to magic. I'm going to click on resistance to disease and resist magic. Disease 67%, magic 21%. And again, with restoration loop, you can do this to where it's super powerful, but you don't really need to. It tends to distract from the game. Now, the next potion I take, I'm going to, again, swallow the Fortify Enchanting Potion, and I'm going to do the boots. And the boots, I'm going to put on Fortify Carry Weight and Fortify Sneak. If you have Muffle, that's even better, but Fortify Sneak. Not bad. And after that, I'm going to do the gauntlets. After I take the Fortify Enchanting Potion, I'm going to do the gauntlets. And with that, will be Fortify Archery and Fortify Single Handed Combat, since that is, or One Handed, that is what my character's using one-handed combat, and it's 43% better, which is not bad, and it helps. The next item I'm going to do is the armor. Now, this is where I screwed up. I didn't have proper enchantments on the armor. I'm going to put Fortify Healing Rate and Fortify Stamina Regen. I didn't have that at the time. And so now, 
The stamina and the healing rate are much better. And then the final item I will be enchanting is the helmet. Now, the helmet is going to be, I mean, water breathing and fortify magic regen. It's that simple. You can't put fortify speech for some reason. I don't know if I have it, but maybe I don't have it. No, it doesn't look like it, but water breathing and fortify magic regen. Could do lock picking illusion. No. Fortify magic regen. And there you go. Uh, as far as weapons go, I'll tell you this right now. You do not want to do dual wielding or dual enchantments on weapons. You just want to put one type of enchantment on weapons because it does you no good unless you spend perk points on like the storm enchanter, etc. You just want to put one type of effect on weapons. And let's see, again, I'm going to take a look. Yep, Alchemy, Alchemist, Benefactor, Physician, you use those, it'll help you out. Now, the final thing I'm going to show once I get out of this is, yeah, you don't want to go to Experimenter, you don't want to spend any more perk points. Three perk points you can sacrifice, but what I'm going to show you once I get out of this is, yeah, why am I messing around here? Smithing, I can redo. I already made it legendary. You can spend perk points, but weapons, again, you only want to have one enchantment, and I'll show you right now on. I'm going to flip to the better gauntlets and other items and favor them because you don't want to lose them. You favor your items that you want to wear all the time in order to ensure that, yeah, this is the helmet that I want. Swim underwater and magic regen. The other one, eh. Take off that. I'm going to go to the silver ruby ring and favor that. And the gold necklace. Nope. Next one. Yeah, there we go. Disease resistance and magic resistance. I'm going to favor that. Now, as far as weapons go, again, never put dual enchantments on them. I have created this character here and again I'll show you weapons I only have shock damage and absorb health shock damage or damage magic on one of your weapons at least because whenever you encounter like my bow whenever you encounter creatures for some reason in Skyrim they all wield magic well, I'm Brad, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment, showing you how to enchant armor and dual enchant. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you like this type of video, I put four out a week. So hit that subscribe button and bell icon and you will be notified. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for stopping by.